Hi, this is Andre. This is going to be a video showing how I make sequence glitchy samplers in the grid. This is going to be the first video in the series. It's uh, it's the intro, so I'm basically just going to give an overview of this patch, what all the features are, how it works, and then I'm going to follow it up with a series of videos um, building each one of the components from scratch, and then at the end I'm going to combine them all together to make the final, the final patch. Uh, if anybody saw my first Bitwig video that I did about a year ago, uh, I had a kind of glitchy sequence sampler in there that I showed, and I never really followed it up with the videos of how to make it, so I figured I'd kind of do that with this. This is a bit of a different patch because I scrapped that one, um, ended up rebuilding it pretty much from scratch uh, at the beginning of this year, and made a bunch of different versions of it, but I haven't really used it in about in about six months. I've been more focused on making synth patches in the grid, but um, anyway, yeah, I'm rambling on. Let me... Uh, hit a note and let you hear what it sounds like or not what it sounds like but the patch that's loaded in now and then and then I'll show what all the features are okay so as you can see basically there's a bunch of uh, drum loops these are all kind of old school sounding drum breaks and um some kind of effecty ones loaded into loaded into the sampler as a multi sample, and uh, it's basically just sequencing and stuttering and kind of glitching out all these drum loops. And you know you can use this with any loops or one shots or anything. It can be used in a bunch of different different ways. Yeah. So let me give you kind of a quick overview, and then I'll go into more detail. So uh, basically, the top over here is uh, the triggers, the, the next row is re-triggers, after that is probability, this is the slice, so it's basically like uh, the s position within the loop, this is pitch, it's off right now, this is uh, the sample select, so basically each one of these determines which sample is playing at that step, over here is a transpose, then over here uh, just it decides which kind of sam which sampler type it is between the three bitwig sampler types so between repitch cycles and textures which is the granular mode then over here is the decay for each step and then down here is the speed of the sampler which works differently in each mode and then down here is the grain size for if you're in the granular mode so now let me just go basically more in detail knob by knob and show you kind of what what's going on with everything so the first one is the global time so if I bring it down here it's gonna be really fast over here it's gonna be really slow all right and then I, so that's a clock divider. So it's basically um, clock divider multiplier. So it's saying half time, normal time, or double time. And then I have that same knob for each individual sequencer. So the sequencers can run at different times. You can also the sequencers can also play different lengths and different directions from each other. So you can kind of create very sort of random like just random movement throughout the whole thing. So let me just go through each one of these now. So like I said, the first one is trigs, and uh, these triggers are overridden by these re-triggers. So uh, you don't really need these if you have re-triggers on all the steps, and if you just have it really short at the bottom, it's just one trigger, so you could just actually sequence the whole thing on the re-trigger section. Um, yeah. And then like I said, there's a timing control, so like if it's over here, these, this is gonna be really fast. And then um, these are the repeat the repeat rate. So uh, this is how fast these the triggers are. So basically, as you pull one of these sliders up, it's going to go from like you know one one trigger to two triggers all the way up to I think two hundred fifty six or one twenty eight. I don't remember what the top is, but it goes really fast. And so then you can actually change those timings with this too. So you can see like if I have these over here, if it's down here, it's going to be slower. 
And then if it's up here, it's going to be really fast. So it's going to be like tonal. All right. And then over here is the direction. So again, I have that for each sequencer. So the first one will be uh, forward. The second one will be reverse, as you can see over here. So now the, you see the triggers columns playing backwards. And then we have pendulum, so that plays forward, then backward. I'm not even gonna play through that. You know what? You know how pendulum works and ran. The last one's random, which is a little glitchy right now. I, like I said, I, uh, I basically went through a folder and was trying to find the best working version of this because I have all these different ones that are named weird. I, I couldn't remember what was the actual final version of this patch. So there might be a couple things that need to be fixed in here, but we'll sort all that out in the following videos and when we build this thing because you know we'll test everything out. And then um, this is another knob that. I have for each one of the sequencers which is length and so this um basically decides if you have one sequencer two sequencers four sequencers or eight or eight sequencers so if it's over here it plays one of them um let me do something that's more obvious so you can actually hear it see over and then over here two then over here four And then eight again. And yeah, so each one of those sequencers basically have those for deciding, you know, how the sequencer is running. So then the next one is probability that just decides um, the probability for each step. And that's the probability that it's going to be triggered. And then one thing about the probability is, uh, if you don't have probability, but you have the decay all the way up from the first step, you're still going to hear sound over here. So if you if you actually want this muted, you would have to have the decay down too on these, because otherwise it's just going to continue playing the sample from where it left off. Um, I, I might change that and try to just do like a different method. You know, I've, I've tried so many different methods with all these things, so it's always just kind of experimentation. And then the next one is slice. Let me just turn off these re these retriggers so it all makes a little more sense. Let me also turn off any other effects that might yeah the speed doesn't need to be on. It's off. All right. Uh. Oh yeah. Let me just turn off the select too. So we're just hearing one sample now. So yeah, it should just play one sample. All right, so this is a slicer. So basically, you know, if we change things around, like for example, now we'll have extra kicks. Oops, that was, that might not have been a kick. Oh yeah, it wasn't a kick. So yeah, you can basically rearrange it how you want it over here. So, you know, see whatever. Anyway, you get the point. Um, I noticed there's a little bit of clicks here. For one, my my computer does that. The CPU is a little screwed up, but there might be some issues I need to sort out on this version of it. Um, anyway, so the way the slicer is working is that these um, these sequencers basically are converted into the are converted into phase, but not not phase in like the phase of a of a waveform, but like phase how Bitwig uses time as phase in the grid. So basically, they're converted to the phase timing wise of the sample, and then that basically runs these um, merge modules over here that have different points of the of where I would want the waveform for perfect subdivisions. So it's basically subdivided into thirty two. And of course, you can subdivide it less if you bring the length down of the um, of the uh, of this. And then I also have a knob over here that decide that decides the sample length. So if you have, 
for example, if you have like a four bar sample or a half a bar sample, but everything else is, you know, but you're running it kind of how you'd have it with one bar, you can adjust the sample that way. So you can see, if you look over here at the play marker, you can see basically in this sort of default middle position, as it goes through the eight different sequencers, it's going to play from the beginning to the end. All right, so then if I bring it down here, it's going to play, uh, I think, really fast. It's just going to play half the sample across, the, across all of them. See, then it just, it just repeats over there like that. And then if it's the opposite way, it's going to, all eight of them will only play half of the sample like that. All right. Well, this mic's close enough. Okay, yeah, so then, let's bring that back over here. The next one is pitch, and then with the pitch, I have a few different options. So, first of all, there's this MIDI in option, which allows you to play different pitches on, with your keyboard. And then there's this, this one is a sequencer, so, you know, you can sequence it. And why is it playing the timing so funny? Do I have the, oh, that's why. No. Oh no, that seems all right. All right, yeah, so that's the pitch. And then again, it has all the same controls. I also had an option over here for uh, what do you call it, a pitch quantizer, but I think that's off right now. I think I can just turn it off at the, on with that button, but I'm not gonna get into all that. And then, as you saw earlier, the select knob. Oh, that's why it sounds weird, because I changed, don't I change this? Oh yeah, it's these pitches over here. Let me just turn that off. One more. So basically, if we play with this, it's just going to trigger different samples. And then, like, for example, if we were to change the timing on this, it's going to sound very different too. Like. And then, um, then after that, we just have transpose that can just be drawn in. And then I have an I have an attenuator for uh, how how much it'll transpose it because sometimes it's hard to dial them in. So just to bring it down more subtle, or just if you want to turn it off altogether without having to you know draw without having to turn the, to draw this all off and then you'll notice i have oops might have gotten too close to the mic you'll notice i have two samplers for for some of these instead of eight and that's because uh the ones that i wanted to instead of have, have steps have inter interpolated automation i found it better to have long long sequencers because uh the way that the interpolated samplers work in the grid is that they have to start and end at the same position so it kind of limits what you can do with it so for these ones i have basically two samplers that are um you know each one of them is equal to four of these and then i have an option just over here to have two two of them playing or one of them playing so then down here i have the sa sampler t sampler type the decay so that's pretty self-explanatory it's off right now the decay but yeah, if I turn it on, basically you'll everything's going to be really short. Um, and then I have the speed, and then the grain size for if you're in the granular mode. These are kind of small. I sort of have to zoom in. So if I draw the speed 
because right now we're in tape mode, it's going to basically pitch it weird. Let's maybe just not have that on. And then if I turn this up here, it'll be all in granular. Except for some reason that didn't work. Let me check. Like I said, I have lots of various versions. Oh, yeah, this isn't... Let me see. This isn't set up. Okay. Yeah, I, I loaded in the wrong version. Let me just automate or just assign that really quickly. And then it looks like there's a missing wire right over here. Let me just run that in to, I think, here. And it should work now. Yeah, that sounds more granular now. So now if we play with the um, grain sizes, for example, we should hear some kind of granular stuff. Yeah, obviously that sounds a little sloppy, but, you know, you'd want to put some put some thought into it or spend a little time to get to get things to sound right uh but yeah that basically allows you to just have specific steps kind of granularized and yeah and i end up usually tweaking these patches depending on what kind of sound i'm working on so sometimes i might just change these to be steps instead of interpolated and like i said i've got various versions depending on what i'm doing with it and yeah so that's basically i think the whole patch and yeah if i give you kind of an overview you can see so this whole section over here is what gets the uh retriggers going and i, I did a tutorial on how to make a, a stutter effect in the grid like a year ago and so that's kind of a similar idea except instead of triggering the um instead of triggering the record and play on the recorder device is just triggering the gates on the uh, on the sampler and then yeah this is you can see over here this is the global time and then these are the individual sequencers so you can see there's kind of a lot going on because like sometimes I end up just deactivating certain things to save CPU like if I'm not using the directions and all that I'll just turn them off but uh, this is a it's a bit of a weird setup so one of the things I had the most difficulty with in this version was um, these length knobs was being able to select between one, two, four, and eight. But when I started using it, it just seemed like a much better way of doing things to have that option because being stuck, you know, I like having the option of having eight different sequencers because you can kind of go into better detail and really see what's going on. But, you know, if you have to fill in things, like if you're slicing and you have a pattern, if you have to draw it all the way across eight, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So having the option to um, have diff various sequencers running at different lengths, I, I thought was pretty useful. So that's what all these mo all these these sections over here are. And then these over here are basically, I've done other tutorials sort of, sort of showing how you can use logic to sequence um, sequence between different sequencers you know so they play one after another like this so that's basically what's going on all over there and then uh these are all kind of where the sequencers are merged together and sent out excuse me all that stuff and then like i said this is the playhead sequencer so I, this was one of the trickiest parts for me when i was first setting this up to kind of figure out how to do so i think this is what i'm going to get into on the next video and then, yeah, here's just the sampler where that all this is being set to control. All right, so, um, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to follow up with the next video. I haven't really made any, you know, exact plans on it. I'm going to try to have one of these out maybe every week or so, but I'm going to see how it goes. So, cool. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.